Hey guys, how's it going? It's the Anime Over Analyst here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of One Piece Chapter 1030 and 1031. So, I was doing these little shorts recently with the chapters, mainly because I wanted to try out shorts, and these chapter reviews generally don't do well, and I'm messing with my hair because I kind of just woke up. And these last two chapters I actually want to talk about and not just do the kind of stupid, like, four sentence structure that those shorts were going. So, basically, the things that are kind of bothering me, and I'm just gonna be telling my thoughts, I'm not really going to be summarizing here, is kind of the stuff that's going on with Sanji. I'm kind of on the fence when it comes to him. He's going through this existential crisis, and in this latest chapter, he actually bumped into a girl and, like, hurt her, theoretically. Now, I saw a review of Tekken saying that it's possible that some someone else may have hurt her, but I don't know. He's kind of going through an existential crisis. That's actually... I want to pin that. I want to talk about the girl, actually, because I think that girl may have been the one to help heal the scabbards. I, I'm thinking that's not just a random girl, because this is Oda we're talking about. And so I'm thinking that it is very possible. She does have the same type of hair, or close to it. Like, I can kind of see the hair kind of going down her face there. So I'm thinking that's the same girl that helped out the scabbards, and Sanji just somehow managed to bump into her. And, yeah, maybe, maybe it's one of those kind of shapeshifters, although, now that I think about it, it's not a shapeshifter, and when I say shapeshifter, I'm thinking of, like, um, Bong Clay, but Bong Clay was able to turn into, like, Nami, and Sanji couldn't hit him, because he had Nami's face, so now that I think about it, that's, that's not a shapeshifter, but anyways, yeah, it's real, real interesting there, and how, I don't know how I feel about Sanji's existential crisis. It's real interesting, he happened to have a transponder snail, and he managed to slip it into Zoro's, like, kimono. I'm trying to remember if there was actually ever a point that he did that. I don't think I remember a point, but it's definitely possible. And he goes up to Zoro and was like, hey, you know, if I change to a point where, like, there's no return, just end me. You know, that's just the stereotypical kind of, like, kill me if I become a monster type deal. And Zoro being Zoro is just like, yeah, I look forward to it, actually. Which is just his way of saying, don't die on me, don't become a monster. So, the whole Zoro Sanji dynamic, I love. I do love that. And we got to see a little bit of Zoro kicking butt against King, but not too much. And, oh, the two th another really big thing that happened in these two chapters is Big Mom. Uh, basically, Kid and Law showed their awakened powers, which... I think he's really cool. I like Law's Croom. It's real interesting because he had this attack called Anesthesia, which does damage on the inside of Big Bomb's body, which he already already is able to do that. I think he has like a special knife attack that does that, but um, it does some really significant damage to Big Bomb, and at the same time, Kid did uh, assign his magnet fruit to like Big Mom, making her magnetized. So he became, uh, she she got attracted to like these steel beams and they impaled her. And that's real fascinating to me. And both Kid and Law said that their powers they can only activate when they're like really close to death and it wears them out. So it really shows that. 
they still need to develop. They've got room to develop and with their powers. And when it comes to Luffy, if whenever he develops his powers, I'm assuming it's gonna it might even be in this arc where he awakens the Gumma Gumma no me. I'm not so sure because he keeps awakening new powers in this arc. It's just like his power scaling nuts. It's weird. And so I kind of wish that it was a lot more level, but then again, he is taking on Kaido, Kaido, and Kaido has shown himself to be a force to be reckoned with. Like, he's not someone easy to take down, which I do appreciate. I do wish there was a little bit more character behind Kaido. He's kind of just there. He's kind of evil for the sake of being evil, and I really don't get it. And, of course, there's, you know, Big Mom. She she got up and went on a rampage this last chapter. She went and just absorbed everyone's souls around her. And just started making homies left, right, and center. And she even took a year's worth of her soul and ate it and then grew. So, that makes me wonder if she's done that before because she's already huge I'm thinking she might have that she's done that before sometime in the past maybe on that island uh, I think God's Valley is what it was called where it was uh, I think it was Goldie Roger Whitebeard no it was Goldie Roger Gart versus the Rocks crew and that insane battle who knows what happened after that but I think Rox was defeated and Big Mom and Kaido kind of got separated but it seems like there's a lot that's pointing towards there so I'm looking forward to that and hopefully we'll get some backstory there let's see now what else oh um we finally found out where Drake is Drake happens to be where Apu is Apu tries to do deal, make some kind of deal with Drake. Honestly, I felt like Oda was like, oh yeah, I've got these two characters here. I I haven't even dealt with them yet. Maybe I should deal with them. Huh. Okay, let's just have them go at each other. And Drake's like, no, nah, I'm not going to join any alliance. Not at all here. I'm just going to beat you up, Apu. And he kind of figures out Apu's powers, which is that Apu, not only can you block Apu's powers by plugging your ears, like how uh, Luffy and Zoro did. I think it was Luffy, Zoro, and Kid. But it's also very linear. Apparently, Apu's attacks only attack in a straight line. So anyone that's like just dodging out of his line of sight is able to escape. I guess that's more of a cone shape, honestly, than a line of, you know, because line of sight's a cone. So I'm guessing, yeah, that, that makes sense. So I do love how Yamato just interrupts their fight, like, halfway through. She just burges in. Apu's like, oh, yeah, join my side. And Yamato's like, I don't have time for this shit. Starts attacking Drake. Drake's like, I'm on your side. She's like, oh, sorry. And then just runs off. Like, that was just hilarious. And apparently one of the numbers, because there are... When I first read that chapter, I was like, oh, wow. there's Apu has three giants in the basement. Like, three straight giants. And then I saw that they were the top three numbers like one two and three and i'm like oh i kind of don't care anymore about them and now i don't care about them period like one of them changed chases after yamato and the other two kind of chase after that guy and so it's, i guess it's just a poo and drake now i guess i don't know i don't really care about that fight to be honest and so that's pretty much it between these two chapters. Sanji's existential crisis is... Like, I get it. He does destroy the raid suit in this last chapter, which is really cool. I do like that a lot. Because it really helps cement his character as, like, I'm not part of the Germa. I'm not doing it. He made the mistake of putting it on, which 
You know, I like the idea that he made a mistake. I really, really do. I know that some of the community, a lot of Sanji fans are like, why did you do that? And it does kind of go against his character a little bit, but he's like, eh, you know, gotta peep some girls, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. It's Sanji. So, I'm looking forward to seeing maybe some more Kaido flashbacks, some more Big Mom flashback. I'm hoping that's coming up. I honestly don't know what this next chapter is going to be geared towards. My guess is it's going to be more geared towards the Sanji Queen fight because Sanji finally gains his senses and attacks the Queen. And so I'm thinking it's going to be more centered around that. However, I can also see maybe a shift in focus between Zoro and King. Because we don't know anything about that fight. There's like no stakes in that fight. It's just Zoro being Zoro trying to take on the number two dude. Which would be cool, but you know, there's a lot of potential with King because he's shown off to be part of the Lunarian uh, race. And you know, we could get some more Zoro backstory, finally, hopefully. You know, we've been waiting for some Zoro backstory since it first appeared in Zoro's backstory. What was that? Anyways, that's gonna be it. Like I said, I kinda just woke up, so that's why I'm kind of in a daze. And my internet's out, so that's kind of why I'm making these videos now and recording them, because... I can't post them online, so it's actually kind of good for me. I can kind of stay off the internet and do some editing. So, yeah, that's going to be it for you guys. I am the Anime Overanalyst, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.